Okay, so <clears throat> we're just making some notes about uh, linear algebra, and this is uh, day one. And I'm trying to repeat what we did in class, um, so I'm just going to be writing out some of the slides that we had. Um, so the first part is, you know, what is the linear and linear algebra? We're going to define that more generally later, but for now, we'll just say a linear equation. is an equation of the form a1x1 plus a2x2 plus uh, an xn equals b, where the xi are the variables, and the ai are constants, uh, as is the b. b is constant as well. So an example of a linear equation would be like uh, 3x1 plus 2x2 uh, plus 4x3 equals 6. Okay. Um, if you had something like, um, so not linear, would be an example of something like, uh, how about 4x1 plus uh, 6x2 equals x1, x2, x1 times x2. Okay, this product here would make this a nonlinear equation. Okay, so we're going to be focused on linear equations. And in fact, we're going to be looking at a system of linear equations. Oops. <laughs> okay, system of linear equations. And that's just a collection of linear equations, but they all have to involve the same set of variables. Okay, so uh, we might have, for example, uh, 3x1 plus 2x2 plus 4x3 equals 6, and then maybe x2 minus x3 equals 4, and then maybe uh, x1 uh, plus x3 equals negative 1. Let's put in one more, x1 minus, oh, how about x1 plus x2 plus x3? equals zero. So here's the system of linear equations. And notice that even though this equation doesn't involve x1, we think of uh, that equation as having like a zero times x1. And similarly here, this would be like a zero times x2. And so, um, yeah, so this system, the set of variables uh, would be x1, x2, and x3 for each, for the entire thing. Good. So what is the solution to a system? It's going to be a list of numbers, and the order matters um, such that if you substitute each number in for each variable right into the um, system, you get a true statement. Uh, I mean, that makes each equation uh, true when substituted um, for x1 through xn. So let's do a quick example of that. I'll pause here for a sec. Okay, so let's um, verify that the solution x1 equals minus 1 and x2 equals 1 is a solution to the system. So that means if you substitute these numbers in, you get a true statement. So uh, if we substitute minus 1 in for x1 plus 2 times 1 for x2, uh, what do we get? We get 1, so that's verified. And then the bottom, we get minus minus 1 plus um, positive 1 equals 2, and we verify that that is equal to 2, and it is. Okay, so therefore, this number is a solution, or this list is a solution to the system. Very good. So now we can ask, uh, geometrically, what are we doing? What is the system? 
of linear equations. And so um, we're going to answer that by take, first taking a look at some two by twos. So how about something like um, x1 plus x2 equals 10, and then minus x1 plus x2 equals 0. So geometrically, what is this? Well, minus x1 plus x2 equals 0 is just a line uh, y equals x, right? So that's going to look like that. Uh, that's along the line y equals x, or x1 equals x2. And this one's going to be a line uh, with an intercept of 10 and a slope of minus 1. And so it's going to come down. It's going to start here at 10, come down. Right? And so when you're looking at the system of equations, right, that means the point has to satisfy each of those equations. And so you're looking, the solution then, the solution to the system is a point of intersection between the two equations. So the solution is the set of all points that satisfy all equations meaning they are the points of intersection. Okay, so how can two lines um, intersect in the plane? Well, this is the generic form, right? If you take two random lines in the plane, they will probably just intersect in one point. So in this case, we have uh, one point of intersection, one point of intersection. Okay, but that's not the only way they could uh, lie in the plane. You might have something like, uh, let's consider x1 minus 2x2 equals minus 3, and 2x1 minus 4x2 equals 8. And you'll notice that I just multiplied these by 2, right, to get this. Therefore, what do these look like? Well, you can verify this later, but they're two parallel lines. Um, and so therefore, uh, do they have any points in common? The answer is no. So therefore, uh, the solution is empty. There is no solution. Solution set is empty, I should say. Uh, that is, no solution exists. Okay, and then finally, uh, you might have something like uh, x1 plus x2 equals 3, and then maybe minus 2x1 minus 2x2 equals minus 6. And you might, might notice that I just multiplied the top by negative 2 to get the bottom. And so in that case, right, we end up with, um, let's see, that's going to be 3 minus 1 slope. So, And so these are actually the same line, right? So in this case, you get an infinite number of intersections or an infinite number of solutions. Is there any other way to get uh, a point of intersection between two lines? Nope, this is it. So therefore, we only have three choices. Either 1, 0, or infinity. And in fact, uh, that is what happens in the general case. Um, let's see, I don't think I want to try to write the plane example, but uh, you can see that in the slides, in the class slides. So for example, well, I'm going to do it anyway, I guess. <laughs> uh, if we have like our coordinate planes coming out like this. By the way, if I stop there, with these two planes, right, they would have a full uh, line of intersection points. But then if I put in a third plane like this, right, then there's only one point of intersection between the three planes. And then uh, similarly, if I could have, um, I have, well, if I had my plane that comes out like this and a plane that comes up like this, I could have another plane that kind of comes out straight across, right? Kind of like uh, the leaves of a book. Uh, and then in that case, right, this line would be the sets of intersection. So here you would have one point, uh, one point for the solution. Here you would have an infinite number. 
And then what would a case look like if there were no points in common? Well, you could have something like this where you have uh, one plane, and then you could have another plane that's uh, parallel to that. Oops. And then maybe another plane that uh, intersects the two of them. Right, so in this case, right, uh, this there's no point in common between the, all three planes, right? So the uh, intersection is empty, or so we have no solution. Let's just say it that way. No solution to the system. Good. So a plane in 3D, by the way, just to double check here, a plane in 3D, right, can always be written as our a times x plus b times y plus c times z equals d, right? Good. Of course, um, these are only in 2 and 3D, but the, the same thing holds true in general. So in general, when solving a system of n variables in n linear equations, uh, I could say k linear equations, they don't have to be the same number. We have only three choices for possible outcomes. Unique solution, no solution, or an infinite number of solutions. Okay, we haven't talked about how to describe that infinite number of solutions yet, and so we're going to do that later. Um, what we're going to do next is talk about how we actually uh, get um, solutions together, um, or how you actually solve a system. So in order to do that, we need something called um, row operations. Okay. Um, before we do that, though, I, I forgot to uh, define something. Uh, matrix notation. Matrix notation. So let's do that real quick. So the following are equivalent. The following are equivalent. If we have something like um, 2x plus 3y equals 1, and maybe um, 2x plus y equals 0, then uh, the matrix notation would look like this, where you put the coefficients to the linear part here. This would be like the column corresponding to x and the column corresponding to y. And then I like to put a bar here to say that this is the this is the uh, you know cutoff between the left hand side and the right hand side of your equations, and then I put a one zero here, and so this is called a coefficient matrix, and the whole thing is called an augmented matrix. Augmented ugh, matrix, and unfortunately, our book does not put this line here, does not put this bar here, so it's hard to tell just from the book's notation whether or not you're looking at an augmented matrix or just the coefficient matrix. So for example, you know, if I give you a matrix um, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 2, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, and I say here's my matrix, well I'm not sure if that's going to be the coefficient matrix where I don't have a right-hand side, or if this is the right-hand side. So I will always put a bar here where I want an augmented matrix and tell you that that is an augmented matrix. So if you're ever not sure if you're looking at the coefficient matrix or an augmented matrix, uh, just let me know. And just to wind this up, we only have a couple of seconds left of the time limit here, and then we'll do another video. Um, to rewrite this as a system, you would write as 3x1 plus 4x2 equals 1, 2x1 plus 2x2 plus x3 equals 0, and then x1 plus x2 plus x3 equals 1. Good, and we're out of time, so I'll see you in the next video.